In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how you can look more aesthetic, burn more calories, have better posture, prevent injuries, and more with this muscle group that you might be overlooking. We develop physiques, we train, we educate, and we empower. That might seem a little bit too good to be true, but I promise you training your chest is going to massively pay off. Let's go ahead and dive into why those happen. So the aesthetic side, the side that a lot of us care about the most, and that's completely okay. And I understand of not wanting to have these big meaty pecs that a lot of men have and thinking that training chest like men do is going to automatically make you look that way. But I'm here to tell you that training your chest as a female is going to massively improve Improve the aesthetic look of your physique. Training your chest is going to help add fullness to your upper chest and across your whole upper body, which is really going to improve the look of your delts, which I know us females love to make sure we have some big juicy delts. The pressing movements that you add in with training your chest are not only going to improve the look of your delts and help with more delt volume, but it's going to improve overall how the front of your chest looks. I'm gonna go ahead and pop up a picture here of me before I regularly trained my chest versus now and you can see how much balance it's truly added to my physique. So now that we understand aesthetically it's only going to benefit us, let's go ahead and go into the functions and the other benefits that I mentioned that might have seemed too good to be true. Let's go ahead and start off with burning more calories. And that just comes down to it's a pretty big muscle group and if you're completely neglecting training such a large muscle group, you're going to miss out on calories that are going to be burned because of that, as well as not only the during training calories, but if you carry more muscle on your physique, you're going to burn more calories. And so if you leave one part of your physique off of being able to add muscle, that's gonna be something that you could end up shooting yourself in the foot with. Now, when I was talking about aesthetics, I also talked about what it looks like for imbalances. So not only the aesthetic look of a balanced physique, but also a truly balanced physique. And if you're not training your chest, and let's say you're still training your back a ton, really think about the fact of those imposing muscle groups and what's going on there. Not only is it going to lend to poor posture, but it's going to lend to dysfunction within your movement, and it's gonna lend to injuries, which is something we all want to prevent. So by training your chest, you're preventing injuries, you're adding balance to the aesthetic look of your physique, you're also adding balance to your physique when it comes to the opposing muscle groups and being able to really benefit yourself. Oftentimes when we think about individual muscle groups, we think about the look of them instead of the function, which I always like to bring it back to the function. And when we think about the chest, it's going to have a lot to do with moving our arms in front of us and up and down. So that's going to come down to putting your hair up in a ponytail washing your hair, also pushing open doors, and then of course doing pushing movements in the gym or the movement that a lot of us lust after of doing a body weight push up. So it's going to help a ton when it comes to the function of your body as well. And I really wanted to talk about posture because not only are you going to cause poor posture from having an imbalance of your muscles, your pec minor is actually involved in all inhaling movements. So if your pec minor is weak, it's going to limit your lung capacity and it's gonna cause you to take some more short and shallow breaths. If your breathing is more short or shallow, then it's likely that you're not using your diaphragm when you breathe. And when you aren't using your diaphragm, it's putting you in a fight or flight mode. So that short, shallow breathing, that chest breathing or belly breathing can put you in a place of excess cortisol. It's also going to make it so that your sleep and your digestion and a multitude of other factors when it comes to how your body functions are going to be affected just due to your breathing and posture. So outside of, of course, everyone liking to feel good about their posture, it's going to massively benefit you when it comes to the internal function of your body and how that is going to present when it comes to the external. So that even circles even more around to aesthetics because if your breathing is in a poor place, your core is likely not very strong and that's also going to be something aesthetically you want in a good spot. And it's going to be in a place where, again, it could affect your sleep or your digestion which your sleep affects almost every process in the body. So do yourself a favor by training your chest. 
I wanted to mention real quick, there is gonna be a difference between trying to grow your chest and trying to maintain your chest. So if you're still a little bit scared or apprehensive watching this video, thinking you're gonna grow these huge pec muscles, first I wanna give you some comfort that I've been training chest regularly for multiple years and I do not have that look and I have competed and really pushed for some excess muscle in that area. Another thing to mention here is like I said, there's gonna be a difference between maintenance volume and growth volume. So making sure that your volume is equated throughout your exercises is going to ensure that you're not having far too much growth for your chest if that's not the look that you are going for. If you're curious what movements you should do for your chest, go ahead and check out our chest playlist and there are multiple videos going over different exercises that are going to benefit you. And remember, don't stress, just train your chest.